now we're going to talk about comedy in the 80s. And comedy in the 80s is seems to be more reflected back to like what's the comedy today. It's kind of like bringing back a trend, like a fashion trend, but it's but there are some differences and similarities. So the first comedian I'm going to talk about is Stephen Wright. Um, his career took off in 1979, and his type of comedy that he uses was um, deadpan humor, and it basically means that he had very like he spoke very monotone, and he basically didn't even laugh at his own jokes, which made it funny. And like his jokes didn't make sense at all. It was kind of just like like cluelessness. Huh? No. Even Wright uses deadpan comedy, and that basically means that it's like kind of like anti humor, and he uses a monotone voice. So. He doesn't laugh at his own jokes, and it's pretty rare that you see him, like, giggle at his jokes, so that's what usually makes the audience laugh. And um, a few quotes that he says, and also his stand-up is very split. Like, he changes the subject. Like, it's never, like, a story. Like, most comedians, like, basically tell a story, but his are very, like, I'll read a few. So um, one thing he says is, I got food poisoning today. I don't know when I'll use it. Um, and in, in his stand-up, he changes right away, so then he'll say, I was trying to daydream, but my mind kept wandering. So, basically, it's just dumb stuff that he says that makes the audience laugh, and here's a clip that basically shows you how his voice also helps in the comedy. I like to skate on the other side of the ice. <laughs> I like to reminisce with people I don't know. <laughs> Granted, it takes longer. I like to fill my tub up with water, then turn the shower on and act like when a submarine has been hit. <laughs> and I hate when my foot falls asleep during the day, because that means it's going to be up all night. <laughs> when I get real bored, I like to drive downtown and get a great parking spot, then sit in my car and count how many people ask me if I'm leaving. <laughs> Recently, I was walking my dog around my building on the ledge. <laughs> a lot of people are afraid of heights, not me. I'm afraid of widths. <laughs> I have a three-year-old dog. I named him Stay. <laughs> he was a lot of fun when he was a puppy, because when I called him, I'd say, come here, Stay, come here, Stay. <laughs> and he'd go like this. So the clip you just saw was from 2009, and Stephen Wright, his comedy career started in the 80s, and he's still active today, and his humor hasn't changed at all, which probably makes it even more funny, but he uses the same jokes, so as you can see, like, it's more of like a, like, not really like a relapse, but reoccurrence of the humor, and he's bringing it back, and the differences between um, his deadpan humor and nonsensical humor um, from today's humor is most comedians they tell stories and they make jokes about um, things that has happened to them and I'm pretty sure most of the things that Stephen Wright talks about never really happened to him but um, the com comedians these days they um, they also uh, make jokes about uh, other races other genders and they make like impressions on other people and they like make fun of like stereotypical things. So now I'm going to talk about a very iconic movie from the 80s which is Coming to America and um, this movie uses humor that involves um, uh, clueless humor and stereotypical humor along with um, the use of accents because um, basically what the movie is about is an African prince comes to America expecting to find a wife whom he loves and in spite to his title to basically bring back and be like the queen of wherever he's from. So in the movie, um, the cross culture between um, America and Africa and like the differences and like the way he styled his hair and the way that he saw women and the way that he spoke definitely made um, the movie very funny. God damn, boy, what's that? Some kind of weave or something? It is my natural hair. I have been growing it since birth. Oh shit, what kind of chemical you got in there? I have put no chemicals, only juices and berries. <laughs> Shit, that ain't nothing but ultra firm. Tell me how you want me to cut this. Just make it nice and neat. <sighs> I 
That'd be eight dollars. Movies and different TV shows that came out in the 1960s have changed drastically throughout the years. During the 1960s, there wasn't many ways to get information, and there were limited networks that TV shows could get on. Also, there wasn't much variety as to what you could watch. The public was limited to three TV networks, cop shows, westerns, and situation comedy. Although, now we have over 50 different networks and many different ways to entertain us and different types of comedies that we have access to. It began with an incredible resemblance, a remarkable coincidence. It's my mother. It's my mother, too. An extraordinary discovery. Golly. Sisters. And now, Susan and Sharon, two twins separated since they were babies, have an ingenious plan to get their parents back together. Which? We could do it. It's double the trouble and three times the laughs when Haley Mills and Haley Mills team up to spring the parent trap. Surprise! Exclusively on the Disney Channel. So the trailer that you just watched was from The Parent Trap that came out in 1961, and the story behind it consists of two twin girls that were separated during birth and reunite at a camp years later. Their parents got divorced, and then they try silly ways to get their parents back together in the end. Captain warms up. <laughs> Just keep your eye on the ball, Bonnie boy. <laughs> Yahoo! You're the greatest friend. <laughs> the old man has been striped again. Bombs away. You Did I do good, Fred? The Flintstones was a TV show that aired during 1960 through 1966, and the comedy that was used in the show would be dumb comedy. Okay, I'm going to talk about memes real quick. This is a part of modern comedy. Memes make up a large part of our modern comedy. They are an element of culture or a system of behavior that may be considered to be passed from one individual to another. Memes are comedy that relate real-life issues to something funny or entertaining. New memes are created every day and are tried to make comedy off the most relatable topics. Memes give everyday people a chance to input their own opinions and ideas into pictures or videos so that others can relate and see the same things. Anyone can create memes, which is why they are such a big part of the modern world in comedy. There are too many different types of memes, which means a single list of categories cannot be made, although I do have a couple of examples of some of the more popular memes. CrossFit. I play real sports. I'm not trying to be the best at exercising. This meme's funny because it kind of makes fun of a group of people that do CrossFit. CrossFit is known as like you know exercising, using a lot of like awkward exercises, flipping tires, climbing ropes, doing pull-ups, a lot of stuff that you know people would see as a sport, while others would see it as kind of a joke of the sport industry. So that's a meme making fun of a certain type of people. Just realized if Hillary wins, I get interns. This is funny because Bill Clinton was always caught in scandals with sexual relations with his um, interns and other things like that. So this is memes based off political comedy. Teachers say, pick a partner, and then says, look at your friend like this. This is more of a meme that's just kind of stupid and relates like actual actions that happen in everyday life to a picture or a video. So peop some people will see this and have like contextual background of what it means. Other people won't have any idea what it means. Trying not to fart while sitting next to your crush. As you can see in the picture, we have a guy who's sitting there looking really, really t nervous and tense, and you have veins popping out of his head. And this can be funny to most people, or other people might not find it funny at all. The idea of memes is that they are all conceptual. Like, some people will find humor in them, while others won't. This is different from past comedy, because in the 1960s and 1980s, we didn't have um, social media that allowed people to make input on comedy. Everyone had only one way of watching comedy, or listening to comedy. So when they watched the comedy on the uh, TV or listened to it on the radio, they only had that. They had no input. Memes give people a chance to input their own ideas and change it to people that can see it. Here we have a couple of texting memes. 
which are basically taking – not all of them are real, but conversations that would happen between you and somebody else. Here we have one. It's to a, one of someone's significant other. It says, I like you. Do you like me? He replies, no. The sad face. You never asked if I loved you. Aw. Do you love me? No. This is one of those deadpan memes that would almost just kind of be seen as not even funny, but just kind of cruel. And the cruelty of the, um, the meme makes it funny for that reason. Here we have another one. It's called Stupid X. Oh, really? So if girls are better than guys, then why did God create man first? That is obvious. Everyone needs a rough draft before a final copy. Overall, memes are kind of the ways that people can create their own comedy. They're put on social media. They're put on even on TV sometimes. But memes are basically the people's voice in comedy. There's so many different types and there's so many different amounts of comedy within them. Some of them are cruel. Some of them are inappropriate. And some of them are actually just straight up stupid. Although they all contribute to the comedy that is our modern society. Okay, now I'm going to talk about a modern movie that I consider to be like a good movie to represent comedy that is our modern society. And that movie is Step Brothers, which made in 2008, uh, directed by Adam McKay. It stars Will Ferrell and Adam C. Riley, or John C. Riley. Uh, this movie is about two aimless middle-aged losers still living at home who are forced against their will to become roommates when their parents uh, marry. So this movie is based off stupidity and just outright nonsense. Two people who happen to be in their 30s who, are, um, who become stepbrothers and it's just a clash of play on words, stupidity, outrageous actions and it's a great comedy. I represent this as like one of the newer comedies because modern society has a lot of um, comedy that would push the boundaries that we consider to be like safe to say. A lot of the jokes in this movie – um, are outrageous and shocking and people would find them inappropriate which is a big part of modern comedy because people think that if you say some outrageous things and some shocking things that you're funny like you're you're so crazy that you are funny so this is a good movie to to push that boundary and represent what modern comedy would really be and we'll put up with the retard in the meantime who's the retard you but y'all don't say that shut up wake up my dad and get me grounded just shut up. You and your mom are hillbilly. I'm not gonna call him dad. Brennan, you're 39 years old. I would not expect you to call him dad. Well, I'm not going to, ever. Even if there's a fire. You wanna punch me right now, but you won't. You wanna punch me too, Brennan? You guys both look like you might wanna hit me in the face. You do, I can tell. Well, why don't you do it? Why don't you punch me in the face? <laughs> oh. Awesome. Hey, Derek, you know what's always good for shoulder pain? What? If you lick my butthole. Comedy from the 1960s through the 1980s had a large amount of race-related comedy. In this time period, it was considered to be normal because racism was more present. In our current time period, we live in a more sensitive world that is more accepting of all people. Racist jokes and comedy are still around, although rather than being seen as normal comedy, it is seen as being funny for being outrageous. There are multiple types of comedy, and within those types, there are different styles of comedy. In stand-up comedy alone, there are countless styles. There are comedians who use shocking comedy, while others use genuine comedy. There is a huge difference between saying shocking phrases and intelligently writing comedy. Uh, some shocking comedy that is uh, used still today. Uh, this is a quote from Daniel Tosh. Even when I was a kid, my imaginary friend would play with the kid across the street. I'd be like, hey, so I guess I'll see you later. And he's like, whatever, queer. That's a hate crime. This, uh, this type of comedy is just, there's really no point to it. It's just stupid, and it just makes you laugh because it's something that you wouldn't expect. Another quote by Daniel Tosh is, the national anthem sucks. Are you kidding me? Do any of you have it on your iPod? This, uh, this is funny because, like, it's true, but you rarely hear anybody talk about the national anthem being terrible but if you think about it no one really does have it on their ipod or listen to it except for at football games or lacrosse games you ever hear girls say that i'm not religious but i'm spiritual i like to reply with i'm not honest but you're interested uh now we're gonna uh share some anthony jeselnik quotes uh one of his uh most favorite 
famous quotes is, My ex-girlfriend owned a parakeet. Oh my god, that f***ing thing would never shut up. But the bird was cool. Uh, this... <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I was doing good! <laughs> Most people find this funny because... At first, you think he's talking about the parakeet that would never shut up, but really, he's talking about his ex-girlfriend. And parakeets are known for being very loud birds, uh, and stereotypically, women are known for being a loud gender. So, n that is why most people would laugh at that. My girlfriend is, is upset about her new haircut. I don't understand why she's crying. I'm the one who has to get a new girlfriend. Most people find this funny because uh, it's just very ironic how... His girlfriend's the one who got a bad haircut and is, and is upset, and he's just really shallow and doesn't want to be seen with a girl with a bad haircut. So, uh, it's just very shocking in a public setting. That is why it's funny. Another funny quote by Daniel Tosh is, I hope we find a cure for every major disease because I'm tired of walking 5Ks. I'm pretty sure I don't have to walk a walk to cure cancer. I'll just write a check. This is funny because it's just so shocking that someone would make fun of uh, cancer in such a wise social setting. Not many people can find comedy in such a serious disease. Uh, a quote by Anthony Jeselnik is, Whenever I'm about to have sex with a girl, I play it smart. I just automatically assume she has herpes because that way I don't have to tell her about my herpes. This statement is very shocking and most people's reaction when they hear this is laughter because... There's not many other reactions you can have to this because they won't expect it. And uh, that's what is different between comedy back in the uh, 1960s and 19 to the 1980s and comedy now. Because back then it would have been normal, but today uh, it's seen as like outrageous and very insensitive. Got me up all night All I'm singing is love